This is Hope and Health with Doctors Michelle and Mark Sherwood. Insights and interviews with a dose of straight talk to help you enjoy optimal health in all areas of life. Welcome to Hope and Health. I'm Dr. Mark Sherwood, and today we're continuing our series on hormones. If you missed earlier episodes of this important series, I highly recommend them. Today's episode is brought to you by our online course, Hormones. Understand and balance your hormones naturally. Just go to Sherwood.tv forward slash hormones to learn more and enroll. This 17 session course is only $19.99 and includes $30 in bonuses, including a discount on hormone related treatment at our clinic where we serve patients from around the world. So tonight's going to be an awesome, amazing program as always, and we're going to continue our discussion on hormones. We're going to go into some really cool sleep information, a perspective that's really going to blow your mind tonight, and then we're going to talk about our spiritual section at the end as always. As we begin, it is important to understand, as we always state, that when the enemy tries to get you off course, many times he uses your health as the attention getter. In other words, if he can get us thinking about our health or lack of it, he gets us really off track. In other words, we're thinking about more about our sickness and death than we are our ability to live well and living. So that's a a major trap of the enemy, isn't it? Absolutely. That's why we talk about the seven parts of wellness. And at the top of the list is nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nutrition plays about 85% of a role in your long-term outcome. You can either live well and healthy or not. And believe it or not, you have the Hmm. choice. And we we hit these every time because we really want to get that super imposed, if you will, in your heart and mind because these seven pillars are critical. Remember, nutrition is number one, sleep is number two. How much sleep we need to get per night? Seven to eight hours every single night. If we're not getting there, we're not recovering, regenerating, repairing, or rebuilding. So that's a very important component. Number three is stress management, and that's one of the number one reasons, if not the number one reason, why people come into the primary care doctor's Mm -hmm. office is they're stressed out, can't manage stress, and they've got behaviors that get out of control that drive them to do things that they wouldn't normally do, drinking, uh, taking uh, pills, um, smoking, Mm -hmm. and that thing called eating, emotional eating. Four is movement. We need to move more, sit less. We we are just absolutely sedentary in the American lifestyle, and we got to change that yesterday. So move more, sit less. Yeah, what do they say? Sitting is the new smoking? It is. <laughs> sitting is the new smoking. Uh, sitting is probably the newest uh, pandemic, if you get the drift. <laughs> Next is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And Mm -hmm. what we we do is we present the genes that are actionable. We want to look at things that we can change. How can we modify genetic outcome? And that's by taking action or putting the right things on top of your system. If you haven't had your genetics done, you should contact us and seriously consider that because it's a fabulous, fascinating process. Um, Next, we find hormones are there. So hormones, uh, which we've been on this series for a while, we'll continue that tonight. Uh, We may even wrap it up tonight, right? I think We we may just wrap it up tonight. Yeah, but anyway, hormones are big because they are these uh, chemical messengers that are made the end or secreted in the endocrine glands to sort of communicate like emails around our system. Got to have those. If we lose those, we begin to lose communication. If we lose communication, we begin to lose function. Uh, many times we lose our hormones later in life. So therefore, these diseases like heart disease, brain disease, bone disease sort of uh, increase Yikes. in frequency. And, and that's a fact. Mm-hmm. And lastly, we talk about peptides. Peptides are short chain amino acids, short chains mm-hmm. of amino acids that are in chains of less than 50, oftentimes 40 amino acids that do help brain health, They help bone health, they help metabolism, they help sleep, and the list goes on. That's going to be our next section that we cover. We're going to talk a lot 
about the different formulas and different types of peptides. And there are several, so probably beginning next week or the week after, we'll start talking about a series of those that will go on several weeks. And so you'll find those utterly fascinating. And yes, you can use those yourself. We just have to walk you through those and we can get those for you. Can you say peptides do a body good? Peptides do a body good. Milk does not do a body good. Remember that one? You can quote me on that one. But peptides do do a body good. All right. So the overlying theme, of course, is always spiritual and emotional health. We have to have spiritual and emotional health. Without that, we are going to struggle mm. uh, big time. Most um, physical manifestations of disease are driven by spiritual and or emotional brokenness. A little bit of a brief overview of hormones. Keeping in mind as we begin so this, it's really cool. Um, important, when we look at this, they all begin with this molecule called cholesterol. Cholesterol, yes, that thing that we were told causes heart disease years ago. It does not. It does many, many things, including the backbone for the formation of all hormones. So the very first formation of hormones occurs from cholesterol being formed into this hormone called pregnenolone. Now, this is done in the mitochondria. Very important to understand. And once it starts in the mitochondria, it works its way outward to sort of go into other hormones that we're going to talk about. What we talked about briefly over the last several weeks and we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, it, when we look at this uh, from the standpoint of what are hormones, they're generally speaking chemical messengers that are created in the endocrine glands. So keeping in mind within the mitochondria of the cells of the endocrine glands, that's where you get the cholesterol to pregnenolone conversion and they get more created down the line and they make the hormones we're going to briefly mention that we've talked about before tonight, but they are chemical messengers. Think of them as emails. Now, there were several important hormones that we've talked about previously, which are? Well, we've talked about seven of them, and we'll complete the series with eight. At the top of the list is insulin. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's the blood sugar hormone. Then there's cortisol. That's the stress management hormone. Mm -hmm. Then there's also this hormone called leptin. Mm -hmm. The satiety hormone, which helps you be satisfied after you eat. Thyroid, which is the metabolism mm -hmm. hormone. We talked in detail about DHEA, or dehydroepiandrostenendione, mm -hmm. which is the sex hormone producer. Mm -hmm. We talked about estrogen, the female sex hormone. Then progesterone, the mother hormone. And tonight's topic of discussion is testosterone. The male, it's considered to be the male sex hormone. However, listen to these nuggets about testosterone. Is it a male hormone? The answer is not no. at all. It's actually a hormone for everybody. And you know what I think we should do next week because we've covered this a lot? Just kind of have a, a very brief review over every single one of these. Just kind of Put it together, boom, 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 right? And kind of tie them together in a nice bow. You, you like that yeah, idea? Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. So that it'll, yeah. After that, we'll go to peptides the following week. Perfect. Okay. So testosterone is considered an anabolic hormone that regulates mm -hmm. the development of muscles and bones, and it actually improves brain function. So optimal testosterone levels lend a healthier body composition, body mass, and improve energy levels. It can also have positive effects on your mental health. It might be one of those hormones that abolish a foggy brain. Low testosterone is generally characterized by fatigue, loss of libido, and symptoms of major depression. So testosterone therapy may even be effective as antidepressant treatment. Testosterone stimulates the red cells, which improves oxygen to the muscles and to the organs. Now, studies have found that testosterone can actually be a corrective aid in anemia. And we know that anemia is a source of fatigue. Now, really a quick point on that one. We know with COVID in general, as we've heard, it does affect the ability to carry oxygen. So if you're thinking properly right now, and there's way more to this discussion, of course, we won't go into tonight, different mm -hmm. time, different place. But if you're thinking properly, you're thinking, okay, does this mean adequate hormone presence hmm. would affect my ability in a positive way to transport oxygen? The answer would be, yes, it would. So when you lose hormones, that's why later in life you lose hormones. If you don't replace those, the top comorbidity towards mortality of COVID 
was age. Pretty cool to think about. Yep, age. Now, you know, while too many red cells can pose its own mm-hmm. risk, an abnormality in the low amounts of red cells create this anemia, and mm-hmm. then that can cause organ damage or other health problems. So studies have found that testosterone therapy really can help Mm -hmm. balance the red cells or help the bone marrow make more red cells to reduce that uh, that anemia or fatigue. Mm -hmm. Testosterone also helps optimize body composition and it also aids blood sugar balance. Testosterone is a metabolic hormone. One thing about that, we want to make sure you, you hear us correctly, testosterone is not an anabolic steroid. Nor should it be taken for that purpose. It should right. not be taken for performance enhancement. Will it help lower body uh, composition or body fat? Will it help with muscles? Yes, it will. But it is not, and I repeat, not to be used for any sort of enhancement purposes. We, we don't use it for that reason. Can I say that again? It is not to be used for any uh, performance enhancement purposes. That is not the purpose of this. That's right. It's used in cases of low testosterone, and low testosterone has also been associated with a greater risk of cardiovascular disease. Yep. As testosterone levels drop, here comes obesity, because testosterone aids in balancing blood sugar. Then here comes depression, and then a sedentary lifestyle may actually set in. Mm -hmm. So testosterone therapy is like natural hormone replacement that has been found to increase bone mineral density, and we know that bone density decreases as we age, raising the risk of that dreaded disease called osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. So boosting testosterone can strengthen your bones, which can aid in the structure and protection for your skeleton and your organs. So in addition to mental health and overall mood, testosterone can benefit the brain in other ways. Studies have found a link between higher levels of testosterone and their reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease. Higher testosterone concentrations may also contribute to improved memory and cognitive function, including special abilities. So it's thought to be only a male hormone. However, it's found in much lower levels in women, but just as helpful when levels are optimized. In fact, women who receive testosterone therapy are less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. So the bottom line is, is that those who receive testosterone therapy, when it's necessary and levels decline, and as age is on the doorstep, these individuals have better cognitive function, better bone health, and better body composition, as well as better blood sugar balance. Now, keep in mind a couple tidbits here. Hormones, natural hormones like this, and even hormones that are bioidentical or human identical that are replaced, do not cause cancer. That's a fact, Jack. To say hormones causes cancer means that when we reach puberty, women or men, we're going to have cancer. That's a false statement. So hormones don't cause breast cancer, nor do they cause prostate cancer. It's not a cause and effect. Association does not equal causation. Remember that. Also understand that women are eight times more likely to get Alzheimer's than men. Why is that? Because they lose hormones faster and more abruptly than men do through a process called menopause. And that happens, you know, just kind of a a process in the body that can happen, but it can also happen surgically through what's called a hysterectomy, or maybe perhaps an ovary has been removed or something like that. Bottom line is when we lose adequate hormones production, ladies, Alzheimer's risk goes way up over the course of time. So keep that in mind. Uh, Maybe it's time for all of us to get our our hormones checked, right? You know, they can't stay in balance if there's nothing there. And unless you have nutritional balance, i.e. the anti-inflammatory food plan, you can't make hormones because the mitochondria where the cholesterol is made into the pregnenolone to start the process is driven along by oxygen and certain nutrients that we have to get from the diet. So you see these lists of these inflammatory foods real quick. You know, we talked about those many, many, many times. We, we've harped this, beat this drum a lot, but the bottom line is these will 
cause inflammation every single solitary time. So there they are for you right there, no problem. And also you see a list of these anti-inflammatory foods that are beneficial. They contain high nutrient value. They're not nutrient absent. Why don't you talk us through the anti-inflammatory foods? Well, as we know, those are quality proteins. We want to stick with um, meats that are grass-fed, grass-finished. In fact, all uh, <laughs> grass-fed animals are grass-fed to start with. Somebody pointed that out to me. It's the process of the finish. If they're corn-fed or how are they finished? Are they finished all the way to the market in a natural way? If they're corn fed, you're receiving, you are what you eat eats. Is that what they say? Yeah, I'm not even sure that there's probably some cows out there right now that have never ate grass in their life. They're probably just, as soon as they were able to eat, they got off the, you know, the the, the breast, uh, the tit milk of their mama, you know, the cow, and they probably got right into the corn uh, soy grain processed food things so they would grow fat fast. You know, cows yeah. aren't sold by weight or by, by health. They're sold by weight. They're sold by fatness. Mm. I want you to think about that next time you that, buy a that. cow. They're sold by by fatness, not by health. Are you telling me that I might be purchasing a diabetic cow? Y- you are. You know, the oh, diabetic hypertriglyceride cow full of toxins and antibiotics and drugs does not seem like something I want to eat. Again, just, just you, a thought. you are what you eat, eat. Yeah. Other things like healthy oils and fats. We've talked about monounsaturated oils, olive oil, avocado oils, other nuts and seeds, and the low glycemic mm-hmm. fruits, uh, berries, apples, semi-ripe bananas, and then low glycemic non-root veggies. Those are the things that grow above the ground. These are anti-inflammatory, non-disease causing to everyone, young and old, all the time. All the time. So where does one start to make changes? We have many, many different plans and places people can start. You can go all the way from being a patient of ours where you work with us all the time all the way down to where you never have to see us. You can only hear us and maybe meet us at events and at speaking engagements. And you can do our 40-day reset plan. So if you need a kick in the backside to get going that has everything laid out for you, structurally with a detox plan, 28 prepackaged meals, all the supplements you need, uh, some fat-burning Fat melting homeopathic drops are in there, and we provide all you need supplement, idea wise, nutrition book wise, detox wise for 40 days, 40 day reset. That's a good place to start. You don't need us. You can go right there, right now to Sherwood.tv forward slash 40, and it's all laid out there for you. Many people do that, and if you're overweight, you will lose weight. But you're going to get healthy. You're going to break some addictions. You're going to find that that's going to be a great way to get you moved down the right pathway again. Don't wait till the first of the year to do that. Begin your New Year's right now. When you wake up in the morning, it should be a time to begin a new year. So think about that the next time you go into this idea of resolutions. Hope and Health is brought to you today by our online course, Hormones. Understand and balance your hormones naturally. Hormones get blamed for various symptoms and they get too much credit as a fix for ailments. Just go to Sherwood.tv forward slash hormones to learn more and enroll. Here are just a few areas we cover in 17 sessions of this comprehensive and practical course. Symptoms and causes of hormone imbalance. Cortisol, the stress management hormone. Thyroid, the metabolism hormone. DHEA, the sex hormone producer. Estrogen, the female sex hormone. Progesterone, the mother hormone. Testosterone, the male sex hormone. And restoring hormone balance. Go to Sherwood.tv forward slash hormones to learn more and enroll. I want us to really answer the question, is the America that we know now dead. That may be sound like a, re- a ridiculous thing to even ask. And aren't we trying to save America? Aren't we trying to re- reawaken America? Aren't we trying to rebirth America? But I want us to think a little bit further. And I'm just giving you thoughts like this so we can have a little bit different perspective. And the question, once again, is the America that we know now dead? I just thought about that question myself as we were putting this show together. Uh, I came up with an answer you may not expect? The answer would be yes. I believe the America that we know 
is dead. The America that we know right now that we wish we had is not alive. The America that we know right now is nothing more than a poor imitation of what it's supposed to be. Uh, the America that we know must be completely reborn, recreated, rebirthed from what's called a kingdom perspective. We've gotten so far off, ladies and gentlemen, from biblical principles that our government, our economy, um, just the way we live our life culturally is nowhere near where we needed to be. We've grown dependent upon the government instead of dependent upon God. I was listening to some broadcasts today and some perspectives from other people in preparation for this particular show. And it, it was clear to me that we have grown to depend on America for our food, for our money, for our security, for our safety, um, for our freedoms, for our liberties. And folks, that was a mistake. We are expecting them to do something that they absolutely cannot supply. The government that we know, the America within that we know right now, is incapable of taking care of us. It's incapable of caring for us. It's incapable of protecting us. And it's incapable of sustaining us. So we have to begin to think about it. What are we going to do as individual persons, once again, to sort of get this idea of God's best and God's blessed America back. We have to do several things. Number one, we have to make sure God's laws are honored. If God's laws aren't honored, the country or America, or however you want to look at it, will never be blessed. God's laws must be honored. Uh, secondly, his ways must be sought after. In other words, we need to seek his ways. God, what, what do you want us to do? We need to seek his provision, seek his thought, seek his mind. So we have to honor God, his, his, his laws, and we need to seek his ways. Thirdly, repentance should be our posture. In other words, we should always have a repentant heart. Knowing full well that we are human beings, and that we are born into sin, but if we have a relationship with God through the uh, belief that Jesus came to this earth, died for us, and rose again, if we believe that, that he paid the price for our sins, we have been reborn. We've been born again, really, into this concept of eternal life. But when you look at that whole concept of eternal life, we still live in a sinful, fallen world. Now, don't get up and plan on sinning. That's not the point. But if you do, and if we do, we need to be in a heart and a mind of repentance all the time. So thirdly, is repentance must be our posture. Uh, fourth, confidence must be our identity. Many times we go through life without confidence. If we don't have confidence, we truly don't know who we are. I was thinking about this and, and, and that the concept of I am a child of God. Why wouldn't I have confidence in that? I am a representative from a kingdom, not of this world. Therefore, I should have confidence. I'm not going to die. I'm immortal because when I leave here, I'm just going to go live somewhere else for eternity. Therefore, I should have confidence. Why should I fear? You will fear if you don't have confidence. So number four is confidence must be our identity. Number five, health must be normal. It must not be freakish. It must not be um, unusual. It must not be the rarity. It must be the normal thing. Christians, hear me. We should be the most healthiest people on the planet. When you walk in a room, people should see your fitness, not just your spiritual fitness or your emotional fitness, but also your physical fitness. No tolerance, no excuse, nothing, period. I don't even want to hear it. So understand that number five is health should be normal. And number six should go right hand in hand with that. Sickness should be rare. Well, not only should we be the most healthy people on the planet, we should rarely get sick. Now, we know that sickness and probably the adaptation of our immune system to build antibodies to the things we have to be around, like um, viruses, for example, sickness should still be rare. If you or I are walking around sick, again, like we shared at the top of the program, that's going to distract us from the good that we need to do. It's going to distract us from the mission ahead. So number six, sickness must be a rarity. Number seven, faithfulness and fearlessness should be what we are all about. Again, faithfulness and fearlessness. I should be full of faith and absent fear. So people should see a Christian come walking up and they should say, oh, there's one of those faithful and fearless souls that doesn't, it has no fear of this thing and what mankind can do to him or her. That would be true. And that would be a good indication that you are 
full of faith, and you are not having any fear or you're absent of fear. And the last one is love towards others must be uncompromising. So we can't have this compromising love towards others. In other words, I'll love you if, or I'll love you when. That is conditional. We need to be unconditional in our love towards others. Now, having said that, we know in this world you will have troubles. We know that everything in the world hates you, that you're not supposed to be hated, loved by the world. So with that said, we're supposed to love uncompromising. So how do you love your enemy? You be kind to them. Now, there comes a time when you're not supposed to you know, just roll over and just, uh, you know, you, you have to defend yourself is what I'm getting at. But we need to do it with with this idea of love. You know, when I was in law enforcement, you know, I had the uh, authority to choose to take life if I if need to be. If I had a, a a fear of my life or the fear of others, I was given the authority to take a person's life, and I did not take that lightly at all. Um, it was almost like you know, many times I'd point a gun at someone and say, "Please don't do that," or "Don't do." That. I might talk loud at him. I might yell at him of course, but I would not want them to do that. I would plead with them to put their gun down or or not pick the gun up because I didn't want to take their life. I was showing them the greatest love, giving them the chance to repent, giving them the chance to surrender. I hope you got that drift. I would tell them to drop their weapon, let me see their hands. Surrender. So giving people the opportunity to surrender but be uncompromising in your love is the point that I want to try to get across. So in other words, the America as we know it needs to die, period, in the story. We need to regrow it, rebirth it with kingdom principles. We need to set the bar at kingdom levels, not at worldly levels. Worldly levels are here. Kingdom levels are here. That's the key to the rebirth and awakening. Remember, kingdom levels rather than earthly levels. Remember these principles, remember this perspective, and let's get this thing done. Let's regrow, rebirth, reawaken the America based upon the kingdom principles that you and I are destined to live in. When we come back, we're going to talk about a wonderful psalm that will encourage you. So tonight we're going to talk about one of the most famous, well-known psalms, Psalm 91. It's a, it's a psalm that we all need to sort of get in our heart and get in our head. So we're going to go through this line by line tonight and just really in this program on a real upbeat, encouraging tone. Uh, how many are ready for some upbeat, encouraging tones? We've had enough negative. How many really want to understand that God is our protector? He is our provider. He's our guide. He's our friend. He is faithful and just and true to show us mercy and grace and forgiveness. And he's going to give us, he's already prepared for us a home uh, in a place called heaven where we can be with him forever, where there'll be no more sorrows, no more tears, no more heartaches, no more virus, no more panic, and no more fear. And with that said, we're going to read Psalm 91 tonight, and we're going to offer a little bit of commentary on the way, but I want you to think about and ponder on every single word. Go ahead. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge Mm -hmm. and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Let's work this one backwards. Perilous pestilence. Kind of sounds like COVID-19, doesn't it? Perilous pestilence. It sounds like to me not just COVID-19, but the pandemic called fear. Fear is the greatest killer of all time. In my mind, and I know this to be true, the perilous pestilence is living persistently in the concept of fear, which weakens your system and makes you sick. But he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides there knows that God will deliver you from that perilous pestilence. He'll deliver you from the traps of the enemy and he'll bring you safely home. So we know that we're going to have these problems. We know we're going to have these things that come at us in this earth while we're here. But we need to dwell in the presence of the Most High. Dwell in that presence. We need to ponder on God the whole time, ponder on His ways, ponder on His thoughts. And when we do, surely He's going to deliver us. 
Let's keep going. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Mm. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I'm not going to be afraid because my my guard, my shield, my covering are the wings of the Most High. You know, you think about this, a big eagle. How would it protect its young? It would surround them so deeply and it would put them so high in the, in the highest, most uh, part of the mountain where nothing could get to it. And that's what God does for us, folks. He will protect us. We don't need to have any, any fear at all. So think about this the next time fear tries to enter into your thoughts and fill it up with Psalm 91. Let's keep going. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That sounds pretty positive to me. Even though yeah, people may no, die around no plague. You, no plague. There that it is again. No, no COVID, no plague. We've looked at this a lot of different times, and we've heard that scripture, and th- this is honest. Um, we haven't been concerned about it one bit, uh, really, and I don't want to uh, minimize it at all. I know people have died. I, I get that, and I, I hate that. But at the same time, i got to be honest with you. I We haven't looked at this as um, lethal at all. Uh, I've said to people, if, if you want a hug and you got COVID, Come over here. I I could care less if you got COVID. Uh, It's not lethal unless you make it lethal. The lethality of this has pretty much been between our ears. We have listened to stuff. We've uh, done stuff or not done stuff with our body to create the lethality, and that's that's a shame. Uh, People are going to die, though. Let's face it. Uh, Death is a part of life, but for us as believers, death, where is your sting? You know, death, where is your pain? For us, it's a transition into another place, another kingdom, another home, a better place. Now, we shouldn't live our life in a way of fearing death. We should live our life in a way, be concerned that we're not living life. What I'm getting at is, even though people will die because they don't choose Christ, that's what it is, Mm -hmm. they will die. They would die prematurely all the time. People do by the choices they make, even believers, quicker than they should. It's been said that believers kill themselves one fork and one pole, yeah. one one bowl, maybe one piece of pizza at a time. Oh my goodness! Without even thinking about it, and it's not okay. But the bottom line is, if we trust in God fully, there may be people dying all around you, but you can stand knowing that God's going to protect you, and you're not going to die one day quicker than He says so. And how do we finish up this passage? For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In the hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Oh boy, that hurts. Mm. (laughs) You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Mm. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him Hmm. my salvation. The funny thing about that last paragraph that catches me is we're going to tread on the lion and the cobra. Who is it that prowls around like a roaring lion trying to seek those he may devour? Hmm. That is your enemy, the devil. Who is also known as the great serpent? That is your enemy, the devil. We don't need to fear the lion or the cobra, the enemy, the devil which is the devil. We can tread on them and walk on them. And even though they will try to torment you, we will not have any fear whatsoever of them. Our Lord says he's going to care for us. He's going to give us a long life. He's going to deliver us and honor us and make sure that he shows him his salvation. But that can only happen, friends, if we stay in uh, his presence, and we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. The, how do you dwell? You have to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It's not about just enough knowing who he is. 
You got to know what he does, what he did for us. He's got to know you. How does he know you? Well, the bottom line is Jesus came to this earth. That's the son of God. He died for our sin. Why is that important? Because sin separates us from the very concept of God. God is perfect. Therefore, sin cannot be in his presence. Sin has a consequence. The wages of sin is called death. And because of that death means we have an eternal separation from God. So what are we to do? When we understand that Jesus came to bridge that gap, how did he bridge the gap? Well, he died and by his shed blood, he paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could all be forgiven of the sins that we uh, commit on this earth so that there is no separation between us and God. So when we acknowledge that Jesus is is Lord. And when we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, and when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is our Lord, we will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the penalties of that sin, which is the separation from God. So therefore, if you think about it, God sent his son to bridge the gap, to span the chasm between sin and him. And he did that through the cross, which is done by the shedding of blood of Jesus. And when we understand that, we know that God sent his son to this earth, not so that, um, you know, he sent it to him, not because he didn't love Jesus, but because he didn't want to leave us where we are. So, and Jesus on this earth was fully God and fully man. He could have quit at any time, but he decided to keep on going. Because while we were yet sinners, he died for us so that we could be forgiven. So we could have this relationship that is unending, unbreakable, and unshakable with this God we talk about in Psalm 91 that promises us protection. So if you've never said, Jesus, be Lord of my life, you've never said, God, I ask you to forgive me my sins. You've never asked Jesus to be the, the, the centerpiece of your life and never confessed that he is the only way to heaven, that way, the only way to spend eternity with God, then, friend, you are you really are treading on thin ice, literally. You're treading on the way of separation from God should you die. But when you do, you find yourself on a pathway that leads to heaven, a pathway that leads to life and life eternal, a pathway that leads to protection, just like we talked about tonight. And we encourage you to do that very thing right now, wherever you are. We hope if you enjoyed tonight, hope and health, and we hope that this leaves you on an upbeat note. Remember, Jesus is Lord and Lord of our lives, and we can't really have good health if we don't have the quality of life we're talking about at all with eternal life. Remember, the whole body is about physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Without spiritual health, we have nothing. But when we have spiritual health, we have the potential to have everything. Choose everything. Choose life. And choose to be back next week to watch us on Hope and Health. And we'll wrap up all the hormones and we'll talk about some other cool stuff. Pretty good, huh? It was awesome. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The name of this podcast is Hope and Health for a Reason. With simple, consistent changes, you'd be amazed at the results we see in patients every day. There is hope for you. Give your body the healthy food it was created to enjoy, and it will thank you. The same goes for what you feed your mind. Subscribe to this podcast and subscribe to our newsletter at Sherwood.tv to stay positive in a negative world. And remember to enroll on our hormones course at Sherwood.tv forward slash hormones. It includes a free ebook and a $20 discount on hormone-related treatments. If you don't live near our clinic in Tulsa, that's no problem. We treat patients from around the world. Thank you again for listening. Doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood and their clinic can help you find the hope and health you were created to enjoy. Go to Sherwood.tv for clear, proven ways you can be healthier. Subscribe at Sherwood.tv.